I'm starting to consider myself a YouTuber. I exceeded the 50,000 subscribers, but this is not how I started. I started my career as an accountant. Don't open a YouTube channel if you want to make money. Open a YouTube channel because you believe in something and eventually uh, it will be the, the passion will help you get where you need to get. So don't underestimate accounting 101. Just okay. you can't. You, you make you're making a big mistake. Why? Because any weakness you get through that accounting 101, it's going to carry with you to intermediate accounting. It's going to carry with you to advanced. They're business-like people, but they're very conservative. I mean, the point is, I did not try to do it. It just happened by mistake. So I would not. So I'm not. I'm no, not the best marketer. Just, just going. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I, I adopted it and I took it and I said, okay, I'm going to embrace it and move on. I mean, I can't tell you the whole story how it started. It was this. I mean, I basically I discovered my own channel by mistake. Hey guys, today we have none other than Mansoor Farhat. Did I say your name? Did I say your name right? Yes, Juan. Yes. There, there you go. And um, you might recognize him. He's amazing on LinkedIn, amazing on YouTube, helping out tons of accounting students that are aspiring CPAs, right? And yes, um, he is also rated by the, the blogs out there as, you know, the best accounting YouTube channel for that and um, or even period just the best accounting YouTube channel to watch on the planet <laughs> very very appreciative of your time very honored to have you on CPA primetime and um, as everyone knows you know I definitely let the guests talk I let them tell them tell us about their origin story. So why don't you start off with uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and you know, what you're doing now? Absolutely. By practice, I'm a CPA, certified public accountant. I never thought I will be teaching or for that matter, even being on YouTube. Now I, I'm starting to consider myself a YouTuber. I exceeded the 50,000 yeah. subscribers, but this is not how I started. I started my career as an accountant, as a typical accountant who wanted to do taxes, audit, uh, maybe have my own CPA small practice on the side. That was my, whole, my only goal when I went back to school to get my graduate degree and sit for my exam. So teaching was not on my, on my to-do list as well as uh, YouTube. And I think my story, if, if my story tells you anything, is always look at the peripherals. Uh, don't have an actual plan. Just go out there, experience the world, see what comes along, and take it from there. Because if you spoke to me ten years ago, I would five years ago, I wouldn't. You, I, I could not see myself being a YouTuber. And if you go ten years back, I couldn't see myself being a teacher. So wow. I turned into something that I did not plan for. But uh, this is why you need to discover life and look at the peripheral. That's the most important thing. Don't be stuck. Don't be stubborn. If you find something that you're interested in, go ahead and explore it. Mm -hmm. um, you may not get there immediately, but if you work hard, if you like what you're doing, it will pay off. No if and buts about it, but you have to like what you're doing. No, so I'll be like, I love my that first message. would say, um, don't open a YouTube channel mm -hmm. if you want to make money. Open a YouTube channel because you believe in something and eventually uh, it will be the, the passion will help you get where you need to get so it's uh, that's how you should that's how you should look at it and this is how it all happens and everything that happens with me from starting to teach to being a youtuber it's all started literally by mistake it wasn't planned but we can talk about this uh, but prior being a CPA actually I was a financial advisor I used to have my series 7 and series 63 which is the uh, interesting black brokerage license and right. uh, that's how I because my undergraduate degree was in finance it wasn't even in accounting and that's why I can relate to so many people who are struggling in accounting because as a student as an undergraduate student I still remember I struggled in my financial accounting and managerial accounting I, I, don't, I really don't know I, I mean, I don't remember my grade in my financial accounting, but I don't think it was an A or anything to that matter. <laughs> okay. I believe I struggled tremendously. Managerial accounting, the same way. Um, and the funny thing about all of this is I end up teaching in the same classroom where I took my financial accounting. And I used to tell my students, I used to sit in that corner and my grade wasn't the best, but here we go, I'm teaching now. So just to tell them that grades are important, but they're not, don't hang any, everything on your grades. I, I prefer to motivate students, to teach them how to think, 
how to express themselves, whether orally or in writing, although I'm not the best writer, but uh, that's a skill that they should have. I mean, how you interact with others. Um, uh, if you can express yourself, for example, on a YouTube channel or in any, in any other uh, outlet, and how to think, learn how to think. And this is what you need to get out of college because everything that you learn in terms of accounting or finance or anything for that matter, you're going to forget by the time you graduate. So you, you would learn everything on the job. You need to learn those soft skills. So sorry, I'm, I'm deviating all over the no, place. Love it, love but it. this is how I uh, started. Basically, a finance worked, I believe, almost three years in the stock market. Actually, I still follow the stock market uh, on a religious basis. That's my hobby. But I, since, I, since I had my Series 7, and I lived through the dot-com era for that matter. So I was, uh, I was a stockbroker in 99, 2000, 2001. Nice. So it was an interesting time. I lived through that. I lived through the uh, housing crash. And I don't know what's going to happen now. If we're going to have a crash, what is it going to be called or whatever. But uh, it's interesting. It's really. But Great. having lived through the dot-com crash, uh, you're always pessimistic about the stock market. So I always think, when is the next stock crash is going to happen? Especially yeah, then, yeah. I lived again through the, <laughs> through the housing crisis. But uh, that's a different story. We can talk about that if you'd like to. But this is kind of a little bit about me. So one thing you would, uh, if you want to know about me, I love, I follow the stock market religiously. I mean, not religiously, that's but I do, interesting. I do trade the market in addition to my accounting. And uh, I get, you would say the stock market is my sports basically. <laughs> right, right. No, no, that, that's all super interesting. And I, I definitely want to touch on something that you mentioned there. I mean, you started, obviously you help a lot of aspiring CPAs, you help a lot of accounting students. And uh, something that I kind of noticed there is you, you started wanting to give advice to students, right? So, I mean, what is some of the best advice you could give to those that are studying accounting? What, you know, just what do you want to let people know that would like to know more about accounting? Absolutely. 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 Thank you for the question, by the way. Mm -hmm. Accounting 101, your introductory courses, they're critical. It's, uh, now I, I compare it to you're going on a, on a trip, on like a 10-mile journey. You're walking a 10-mile journey and you have a bag on your back. Sorry, the more you learn in Accounting 101, the lesser that weight on your, on your back. So you can move faster that 10 mile to reach the 10 mile. So don't underestimate Accounting 101. Just, okay. You can't. You, you make, you're making a big mistake. Why? Because any weakness, you get through that Accounting 101, it's going to carry with you to intermediate accounting. It's going to carry with you to advanced accounting. It's going to carry with you to your CPA exam. And it might hinder. Those days that you did not pay attention to your financial accounting course, you're going to pay for those when you are working 60, 70 hours in a CPA firm and trying to study for the exam and you're wondering, why am I struggling? Well, because you did not unload that weight when you were in Accounting 101 and learned the material and that weakness carried with you. So don't mm. underestimate Accounting 101. Mm. That's all what I, that's, that's, that's the best advice I can give to the students. Now, let's assume you, you did not pay attention to Accounting 101 and you were not an accounting major, and uh, here we go, you're a junior, and you decided to be an accountant, now you have intermediate accounting. Again, mm -hmm. intermediate accounting one, they kind of, they teach you everything in one chapter, everything that you learned in financial accounting, but you now you gotta sit down and buckle up and learn the material. Or guess what, or best thing, go to my YouTube, and you can have, uh, obviously, a quick review. But that's what I tell my students, don't mm -hmm. underestimate the basics. And you have 18, 19, 20 year old, students they're not that serious about life they're not serious about a lot of things and well mm -hmm. that's what i try to tell my students i know you're not serious just believe me take it seriously it will pay off down the road that's the best advice i can give them love it love it love it and i mean uh speaking on that by the way just from your experience and um what you've seen i guess how, how have you seen uh students succeed or not not succeed right talk talk a little bit about that i guess like um you know not necessarily cl client reviews like in in that regard but you know how how have you seen some of the transformations because i think accounting is such an amazing subject it's such an amazing topic and a lot of people don't know it right so absolutely once, once they're learning it you know just what have you seen from over the years, what I've been noticing, a, a traditional accounting students, 
um, they are very um, they are very meticulous. Uh, uh, they are very industrious, if you want to call them. They're business like people, but they're very conservative. They're, they they pay little attention to details. So you have a traditional or typical accounting students, and you have. Accounting students who are not, I would not consider typical. They're, for example, they're, they're marketing, but they get, they're getting a minor in accounting. They have a different personality if, you're, if we're talking from that perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, my job as a teacher is to take the traditional accounting students and push them into those additional soft skills that they need, like how to market yourself, how to talk to people, how okay. to shake hands, and teach the marketing people, the finance people, the basic accounting. So it's like you have to be working, right. you're working with two sets of students, although they're both accounting, but they have a different uh, sets, uh, sets of mind. And it's, that's, that's very, very interesting to work Love. with that um, people. I mean, for example, Love today, it. in a couple hours, I'm going to be attending what's called at, my, at, at, at one of the local universities that, that I teach at, meet the, meet the firm night. So you're going to have KPMG, EY, right. the, meet the, the lawyers. Firms. As well as regional firm, they're going to be there. And I told my students, you attend, I'm going to give you extra credit. And I know like all the marketing students, they already sign up. All the business students already sign up. Yes, no problem. I had right. to convince the accounting students because they don't like to go there and meet people and shake hands and give them the resume and, you know, like be professional. Tell them that's what you guys need. Those are the skills that you really need, not what you learn in the classroom. What you learn, what you learn in the classroom, if you're really serious, you could always pick it up later. It's those soft skills that the accounting mm -hmm. students would need to succeed. In the, in the real world. Sure, sure. No, I, I love, so for me, obviously, you know, I, my audience knows that I became an accounting marketer. So I'm probably more on the marketing side versus just getting a hundred on intermediate exams, right? <laughs> so um, I, I love the place like Meet the Firms because I could just really impress the firms at the, at the dinners and such, right? But um, I guess, I mean, I really, that, that being said, I, I'm not just oblivious. I noticed that I had the advantage throughout that process, right? And now I'm really here to help the accountants, like the real accountants. So I guess from your perspective, you know, my audience has seen a lot of my advice maybe, but from your perspective, how can accountants market themselves? And I also think if, if you want to talk about meet the firms a little bit, I also think a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, crossover between how you market yourself at meet the firms and even your business if you're an accountant. So that's super interesting. But if you wouldn't mind uh, helping the real, real accountants out there a little bit with marketing right now from what you know. Well, I, I believe that's more your specialty, but uh, I mean, I'm sure you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you have such a huge YouTube channel, right? I, I mean, I'm I'm just getting started. It is, it is my specialty. I'll be there, but I definitely respect what you've done. I mean, the best way to do it is to share your own experience. I mean, I mean, your what you're well, contributed is 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 great for the students. So basically, what I suggest from my experience is short clips, like you know two, three minutes, five minute clip, like this is what you would need to do for that situation. Boom, 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 one, two, three, like based on your experience. And I believe that appeals to students, like in small pieces, like this is, you know, this is how you should dress up. This is how you should shake hands. This is how you should uh, meet and greet. This is how you should sit on the table, so on and so forth. Because from, from, your, from your experience, this is what you can share with the students. I can share with them I'm not as I'm not a marketer. I'm not by not by any means. Again, the way my YouTube grew is not by mistake. It's just you know, just I I still don't know what triggered that growth. I I, I still don't know. But right. I mean, the point is, I did not try to do it. It just happened by mistake. So I would not. So just I'm not. I'm going. not the best marketer. Just, just going. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I, I adopted it and I took it and I said, okay, I'm gonna embrace it and move on. I mean, I can't tell you the whole story how it started. It was this. I mean, I basically I discovered my own channel by mistake. That's that's how it happens. I love it. I love it, and that speaks to for for the audience. You know, if you're wondering about marketing, I think that speaks to action taking. I actually have guests on this show that then ask me after uh, the show, well, what could I have done better, right? I'm like, hey, I try not to put too much pressure on things. So, I mean, what you can do better is get on more podcasts and just go, right? And not, not think about exposure, of course, yeah. of course not think about what you did wrong or do wrong, but think about what you're good at and then go. 
So definitely respect your YouTube channel and what you built. It's a small incremental. It's a small incremental improvement. Uh, for example, when I started to look at my channel and started to kind of nurture it, the first thing I changed is I changed all my description. I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not the description. I started with titles. I changed all the titles to something that's, that's relevant what's in the videos. That's the first thing I changed. Then I changed the description. Then I started to add the tags. Mm -hmm. Then I started to put the thumbnail. So it's a small continuous improvement that's mm -hmm. gonna pay off. And that's, I believe that works in every industry. Small Love continuous it. improvement. Sometimes it, it may not be linear. Sometimes you may do some work. It may not pay off as much as you want, mm -hmm. but eventually, it will, it, will, it will trigger a positive reaction and it will start to grow. And I believe that's how my channel grew. I mean, it's not linear. I mean, success yeah. is not linear. It's just at some point it will open up. You, don't, you never know how or when or where. But the more exposure you can have as a student or as a marketer or as a YouTuber, the better off you are. Definitely, for sure. Love it. Love it. And um, would love for you to uh, speak a little bit about how you – you know, what, what is your day to day now, right? The, in terms of how you have a lot of attention, just because I talk about something and I, I haven't even said this often audience. So here's a key thing that I've been talking about to my clients lately that, you know, even my marketing mentors have talked uh, about to me with, they've talked to me about, about it with, but it's called anchoring. And so basically you have this big goal in the future right and um i mean for anyone hoping to market and just get a, a lot of attention you cannot be thinking about when do i start my first podcast when do i start my first video right just go and i mean um the goal should be so big that um your insecurities basically don't matter at that point you you have just got to go and kind of ignore your insecurity. So would love for you to talk about what you're experiencing now with a lot of attention, kind of excite the audience to, you know, market more, right? And get out there. Absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm, if I know what I know now, like three or four years ago, I would say my channel would be doubled. But, but this is where you learn little by little, you learn little by little, and you're constantly learning. Um, but, you know, LinkedIn helps a lot. I noticed that once you can market yourself on LinkedIn properly, it's going to help tremendously because you're dealing with serious people on LinkedIn. This is where you need the most attention because you can talk to accountant, you can talk to engineers, whoever you want to. You can basically look them up and start communication with them and start to grow your brand, whatever that brand is. And I, I believe the, the tremendous success, one of the, one of the factors is LinkedIn. Because Love it. and the reason I put more into LinkedIn because I believe I am targeting the right people. I'm targeting CPA candidate. I'm targeting future CPAs. I'm targeting accounting students. Mm -hmm. And once you know you are reaching, you are touching the what you need to touch. I guess you work harder on it. Versus, for example, I'm not good at the Instagram because uh, I don't know who am I talking to. There is no profile. I I like to know who am I dealing with. So it's much mm -hmm. easier for me to expand on um, LinkedIn rather than on Instagram. And I guess I'm kind of older for Instagram. I, I like to be better on Instagram, but I'm not. But this is what you do, you learn. Yeah. So I'm trying to improve my presence on Instagram, but uh, little by little. Sure, sure. M maybe I'll talk to you about uh, Instagram sometime. We just have one of our clients and, you know, a little plug, but <laughs> we just had one of our clients um, get looked at. Do you know who Gary V is? No. So I would look it up. I would look Gary Vaynerchuk is uh, one of the best marketers out there right now. Kind of, you know, he's better than Grant Cardone and Ty, Ty Lopez, all the, all the marketing names. He's really doing a great job right now. And one, uh, he looked at Gary V looked at one of our clients pages just because, you know, he's being so modern on Instagram as well as uh, Vegas Dave. But, uh, you know, that's a little that's a little plug. But I do have to say that you're right about LinkedIn in terms of what I know about the bigger marketing companies, just the biggest marketing companies out there. They have put that information out that LinkedIn is profitable for professional businesses. It's uh, almost it's it's way too profitable to not be on LinkedIn. So um, that's very that's some very interesting marketing talk. But um, just to get back to some accounting talk here, I guess, you know, 
one of the questions I definitely want to ask you is about your new uh, course or your new, your new product. I mean, this is a very uh, interesting time for you. I think you released something new this week. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. And it's my technically my first paid product because students oh, want to, they, they've been w listening to my lectures, but they want something more. Sometimes they want the slides, they want notes, they want to practice what they have learned. So what I did for the past two years, I've been putting this product together and now it it, you know, it came to fruition. It will, it helps any accounting students because I took all the traditional accounting courses and I broke them down into, you know, financial, managerial, cost, audit, government, intermediate one, two, and three. And for each, mm -hmm. for each course, I provided ad additional resource. So it will help current college students as well as CPA candidate because CPA candidate, if they learn the information a while ago, they're going to forget it. Sometimes they don't learn it in college. Mm -hmm. So and they take a review course and the review course don't teach anything. It's called the review course for a reason. You are reviewing, you're yeah. not learning. Therefore you need that gap. So my product will fill in that gap between your college education and that CPA prep course. You would still need a CPA prep course. My product does not, is not a substitute for a CPA prep course. I, I, I wish I can say otherwise, but I can because it's not, but right, it's a right. great supplement for if you're taking Becker, Wiley, Roger, any course you are taking, or Glime, these courses, they go very, they go quickly. They go over the information very quickly. For example, what takes Becker to cover a topic in half an hour? I cover it in three hours. What takes Glime to cover a topic in 15 minutes? I cover it in two hours. Mm -hmm. So I give more details, more examples, the why behind it, the CPA review course, they don't. So this is the product. And so mm -hmm. far, I mean, the first 48 hours, uh, I'm very grateful. I'm very happy with the results and uh, I'm going to knock on the wood and see how it goes from there. But uh, definitely the outlook looks very, very positive. Love it. Love it. So, um, I mean, just being, you know, a conscious individual and looking at things, I think that uh, the CPA exam has too many requirements in terms of college hours right? You know, that's a kind of a silly metric, just like us marketers, we look at both likes and views as yes. kind of a silly metric versus engagement, right? So I would assume that people can take a course like yours and basically replace that with going to an actual college almost. And I, I'm... Yes. That, that might be saying a lot to how people think right now, but I actually think that's how things are going to turn out. So um, based on me just saying that, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yes. Right, college courses versus them, you, right? <laughs> I cannot give them college credit. They can learn the material right. for sure. I, I, have, I have many students that they're taking online courses at various colleges and universities across the country or across the world. And they, they use my channel exclusively. Like that's all what they do. They don't listen to their, not, they don't Love listen it. to their teacher, yeah. but they use, <laughs> oftentimes the teachers don't have any material for them. Just give them the book. Here we go. You're good to go. So they, so they rely on my material to learn the information. And fortunately, not unfortunately, well, that's reality. I cannot certify them. I, can, I cannot give those students a certification saying you earn three credits maybe i should look into that see if this works like an actual get a that's that takes a lot of time and money and effort because you need right. to speak to the department of education the state maybe the federal government who knows what you yeah, need that would take like lobbyists and different um, things yes and <laughs> lawyers and lobbyists and you know i don't have that budget I, I don't <laughs> exactly let alone having a lobby in washington dc or in harrisburg for that matter mm -hmm. so yeah so so yeah it's it's more it, this is how technology is helping us so the students don't have to attend physical classes anymore. They have to rely on, you know, resources like YouTube, uh, teachers like myself who are generous enough and enjoy doing it. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm generous with my time, but I really enjoy do what I do. I like helping people. Love it. Um, so, yes, the future is that, that you're going to have less and less classes. I know from places that I teach they're canceling more physical classes because online classes are filling. People want the flexibility. Now, there's a lot to be done in that area in terms of um, accountability, in terms of testing. Sure. But uh, so far, it, it is, uh, it, it's definitely heading that way. So it's an opportunity for anyone like myself who can articulate themselves very well on YouTube, present the information, and sell their services. So this is a call for anyone, for any topic, for any, if you're good in marketing, you're good in statistics, business. I mean, there's a lot about statistics, you know, Khan Academy is more than enough. 
And I like to be the con of accounting. That's my eventual goal. Um, I will get there eventually. I still have uh, basically one competitor I'm trying to beat now. And after that, I'll be the largest on all matrixes. (laughs) <laughs> love it. Love it. I mean, um, I think, yeah, I think the requirements and, you know, certain things will change in terms of people actually being eligible to even take the CPA exam. I think, um, in, I don't know who is hearing this right now, but I think they're messing up the CPA society, right? Because they're just having less and less and less and less and less uh, by such a high percentage people take the CPA exam. And I think it is because education is changing. People also uh, love entrepreneurship a little bit more, whether you are a real entrepreneur or you at least try it, right? Um, I think being an accounting entrepreneur is definitely exciting. And uh, I think it can be done by learning via YouTube versus just being in a classroom. I think, I think it really can, especially by the best. Yes, I mean, thank you. Uh, like, for example, the, the 150 credit requirement, that discouraged many students from pursuing a CPA. The one they implemented this 150 credit, many people decided not to go for it. Mm-hmm. But now the people are coming back. Yes. But uh, let me tell you the truth. I mean, at least I can speak for the state sure. of Pennsylvania. Um, they are making it easier to, to be a CPA because there's not enough people who are going for their CPA. I know at least two individuals, literally. I know them in person that they became a CPA and they don't have any public accounting experience, but they became a CPA based on other criteria. So they are, this was unheard of 10 or 15 years ago. I, again, I cannot talk of any other state other than Pennsylvania, but I know in Pennsylvania, they're very flexible. Even now, if you have, um, I was attending a conference um, for the State Board of Accountancy, and even people with, with misdemeanor now, they're overlooking the misdemeanor and they, they are becoming a CPA. They're that desperate in a sense of having making sure you have enough cpas wow. so <laughs> students out there go for your cpa it's going to add value to yourself and many cpas are going to be retiring in the near future all the baby boomers and Definitely. many of them cpas and we need to replace them and it's a great opportunity it's a great career it's a great uh, field to be in it, it is it is and um i do think that's why most people choose accounting and you know, choose to get their CPA. Um, in the past, at least, they've done it in hopes that, you know what, it's just had a great career outlook. That's exactly why I majored in accounting, just because it was one of the top uh, out in terms of uh, just, you know, teachers and professors and people advising me um, and reading books, it was going to be one of the most needed professions out there. And it's funny how people talk about um, now when you look on LinkedIn, people talk about, oh, well, are things going to be fully automated, right? Are CPAs going, going to be extinct and uh, uh, <laughs> just, just like go away from automation and software? I don't think that's the case. I think people still need to talk to their CPA and their of financial course. advisor, right? I think the software actually makes a stronger financial advisor and CPA. But, Absolutely. But um, uh, would lo- would love to ask you here before we go. I mean, I'm sure the audience. If go by the way, audience, go to the description. You are going to find uh, how to connect with uh, Mansoor here, and you're going to see his YouTube channel. I definitely respect what he has done as far as marketing. So please check it out, and um, please you know st- study what he has done. But based on all your success, right, I definitely want to make this uh, valuable for the listener. Things don't just happen good all the time, right? Things are not absolutely the, not. the, the dream all the time. So um, would you mind talking a, a little bit about some of your biggest challenges and just making it this far in your career? Time. Time is very, I mean, you don't have, I mean, I'm a father. I have a full-time job. Um, I have another part-time job and I teach on the side and uh, I'm going for my doctorate. I'm going for my doctorate and I have my YouTube channel and I just launched a new product. So one of the most challenging thing for me is time. I don't have enough time to allocate enough time. And, you know, I'm sure you heard of that saying, when you chase too many rabbits, you don't, you catch none. When you chase two rabbits, (laughs) sometimes I feel I am in that mode, but, uh, but then I feel also part of 
success is persistence. You just have to keep on going. Although you may not be making the progress that you would like in a, on a particular front, but don't give up. Keep going. Persistence. As long as you don't burn all your feather, you will get there eventually. But time is a big challenge for me. Time. And for example, marketing myself on Instagram, I believe that's a challenge. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to really have a presence. I mean, think about it. I have 57,000 subscribers on YouTube. I have 3,000 followers on Instagram. Although my students are mostly on Instagram, I just don't know how to leverage that. LinkedIn, I'm good at LinkedIn. So the challenge is sometimes is you're not, you just don't have time to learn the new product because you don't have the time. That's, that's, that's the most challenging for me is not n- enough time during the day to do what I want to do. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing at the same time. That, that's amazing. So um, one of the things that stood out to me while you were saying that is that um, I'm, I know that for me, I'm going to be at that level one day in terms of, oh, like there's so much to do, like there's so much to try to achieve, right? Right now, um, I'm spending a lot of time, more time than money, just because that's what I have as a young, you know, professional, as a young individual here. I mean, I'm definitely spending time, I'll get more sleep in the future. But <laughs> but I, I, I don't suggest staying up for 24 hours, but <laughs> I, I, I may stay up right now. But um, here's, here's what I'm gonna tell you, Juan, that's a lifestyle. Yeah. You, you, if once you are once you are working those long hours, you don't know what to do with yourself when you don't have nothing to do. You'll be like, you'll be lost. So be wow. careful what you wish for because you may never stop this. All, you just keep on challenging yourself and you're on higher and higher. So, and you will never, you'll always be under that. That's a personality. Just people wow. don't, once you have that personality, you would always push for more challenges. Now, for example, the next thing I'm planning to do maybe is maybe, maybe who knows, write a book, write a book about, you know, CPA mm. question books. So mm-hmm. that's my next challenge after my doctorate. So this is, this is just an idea. So is it, it going to be a fruit? Who knows? But it's on my to-do list once I'm done with my DBA because I don't know what I'm going to do with my free time. I'm done with my doctorate. Now, what do I do? Right. <laughs> what do I do with all this time that I spend, you know, writing, researching? What do I do with that? So yeah. just, it's a personality. Well, I think that's uh, super interesting that you say that and that you said that about your book because that was kind of my uh, last and final question here. I, I was just wondering, you know what? for a guy like you that wants to achieve so much, I was kind of going to ask, uh, what's next, right? What's next? But I guess uh, it, it might, be, might be the book, but I guess- no, my- first, I want to make sure my product takes off, the product that I created, the, the new product, make sure, you know, I want to make sure- Exactly. I improve it over time for the next two years. It will, you know, it will be better and better every month, but eventually it's going to, it's a scalable, so it, it runs itself. So I want another project. And I think the next thing is to create my own CPA questions and uh, have my own book just published. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, will be a diff- it will be like on a software setting, also in a physical book. And who knows what's going to happen to books in two, three or four years from now, if we're going to have actual books or not for that matter. But that's mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. the next goal in a sense. And this is the first time I mentioned this explicitly anywhere. And it's all one, so... Very honored. Very, we'll very honored. In four years, we can uh, talk uh, and see where we got about this. <laughs> love it. Love it. And um, I mean, me just studying CPAs, working with CPAs and accountants a lot. I actually do know that um, CPAs, although they study money, although they know money, they care uh, much more about money many times. A lot, a lot of them do, right? So yes. um, with this product that you have coming out, what, what are the things uh, that you're most um, excited about in terms of impacting people's lives? I, I want my product to improve the CPA score for any particular student, 10 to 15 points. So if I can improve that, if I can help per year 200, 300 students just improve that score and help them pass the exam. I'm making a great impact on the industry overall. I mean, over a 10-year period, if I can help 200 students per year, think about that's 2,000, 10 years, yeah, 2,000 new CPAs that I help create, which in turn add value to businesses, add value to the economy. And this, this is my goal. And uh, I'm going to try to keep, now I have my students and my system. Now I keep, keep, keep track of them. I'm going to talk to them on a regular basis, see how well they're doing. I mean, that's how I like LinkedIn because if I help someone on LinkedIn, once they pass, I know that they pass because they put that CPA or they 
basically come on LinkedIn and they declare <laughs> the whole word we passed. And I know, I was, and oftentimes what they do, they thank me, which is I'm, I'm grateful for that. But the point that you see your impact on the life of the individuals, I, I just, that's, that's the greatest feeling that you're helping. So that, that's the goal is to help people. Yes, it's monetized, but the subscription, my subscription is peanuts. It's less than a dollar per day. So it's, it's Love it. students, it's less than a cup of coffee. You can get anything less than a dollar these days, or at least what I am. Maybe, maybe in Texas, it's different. But uh, right, even a cup right. of coffee, it's like almost $2 now, like 12 ounce or from Wawa. So. Love it. Love it. Love that answer. And um, definitely appreciative to have you on the CPA primetime show. Um, Thank you very much. Juan. Of course, of course. And uh, just, just my last uh, question here it doesn't have to be too long, but um, what would you just like the audience to know, right? Accountants, CPAs, watch this show even more than accounting students. But uh, is there anything you would just like the audience to know? If you're interested in marketing, you'd like to learn how marketing done, you wanna watch You wanna watch your show. It's an interesting show about how to market the product, how to expand your, uh, how to expand your presence. And I believe you're a great resource for anyone who's gonna reach out to you, Juan, in terms of marketing skills, especially CPA, CPA firm and CPA businesses. As far as my business is concerned, if you're an accounting student, check out my YouTube channel. That's all what I can say. If you're studying for your CPA exam, Go to my new product, check it out. There's a description and uh, check it out for one month and see how it goes. And I'm here to help you. I've been helping people for the past seven to eight years past the exam. I'm always going to be here. Um, so I hope you will reach out to us, both of us, whatever you, your need are. And we are here to help. That's why we have passion to help people. You know, once you're on YouTube, you are exposing yourself to the public. You're going to, you know, it's, it's a risk that you will take. But as long as you believe your cause is righteous, you will succeed. And that's, this is what we believe. We believe our cause is righteous one. We're just helping others. In one love, way love it. Love it. Very appreciative. And um, you can find his channel down below and um, love that answer by the way. But um, I mean, you saw it here firsthand audience. You, you, you saw uh, the interview here. So definitely I would suggest checking his channel out and what he has going on. So thank you, for, thank you very much. So I'm sure we'll connect in the future. But for right now, on the CPA Primetime Show, that is it.